I swung by the watchtower on my old beat to catch up with my partner, see what kind of details he might have known about what I was getting myself into with this case. But by the time I'd got there, I found he'd fallen off the tower, onto some arrows, and a spear point, and it looked like an axe was lodged in his head too. Tragic, really. My father went the same way. But luckily, when I was there and investigating what had happened, six gentlemen arrived and I asked them if they'd seen anything. Awfully rude, they responded by pulling out knives, axes, and a bow. So, well, I did what I did best, and I studied up. Hello there, everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, here to bring you the next step in our first edition Pathfinder Investigator Guide. Today, we are going to be looking at your class abilities, the overall chassis, the means by which you survive your adventures and possibly even thrive, or at least hopefully that's what this guide will help you to do, help give you a breakdown on how the class works, how things kind of synergize and come together, and what pitfalls to kind of look out for. Now, just bear in mind, this is just that, it's a guide. There are certainly going to be more people uh, people out there who are more expert than I am when it comes to the investigator. Certainly folks like uh, Mr. Charisma that has been down in the comments section, they know quite a bit about this class and have done some very useful math mathematical breakdowns that have given me plenty of things to go back over and just kind of review and play around with a little bit. So just keep all that in mind that you don't have to follow this as if it's something set in stone. That if you have an idea in your head about how you want your character to function, about how you want to bring them all together, absolutely do that. Go forth and have fun. This is the most important thing that you could do while playing this game. Now, before we get into everything that we're going to talk about today, if you're new here to the channel, then go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or if you've already gone on ahead and listed yourself on that legendary roster of incredible heroes, then go on down to hit the like button and share the video far and wide. Now, let's actually start diving into things here. So, to start off with, you're going to get a D8 for hit dice every level. So that's a respectable amount, especially with a decent constitution score. Even better if you can add more to it over time. But this is a class that is kind of geared for and built to get into the melee, get into a fight. So it, coupled with the fact that you have light armor and your early levels, you're not going to have all of your abilities and you're not going to have the highest dexterity score ever, you may be feeling a little bit of that tension in those early levels of play where a couple of solid hits might bring you really close to the brink. So it's something to watch out for. But you get six plus your intelligence modifier in skill ranks per level. That will do a lot to allow you to just, well, just have all of those whole sweet and bevy of skills unlocked and ready and available to you right from the get-go. I mean, just one skill rank in gets you that plus three miscellaneous modifier, all the knowledge skills or anything working off your intelligence. That's another plus three right there. So you could start off with all the knowledge skills, have a plus seven, and then your class abilities, such as with inspiration, will let you add in a roll of 1d6 to those checks as well. So you're looking at at least a minimum of plus eight to any of the knowledge skills you might roll, and you can add that 1d6 to any of those other skill checks as well. So you are going to be supremely capable when it comes to skills. You're even going to outclass the rogue, which is the only other class in the game that uh, actually outpaces the number of skill ranks that the investigator gets. Now, for your saves, you're going to have poor fortitude saves, so that will be a bit of a weak spot. Another reason for us to make sure our constitution score isn't completely tanked and dropped too low, but you will get good reflex and will saves. So with reflex saves coupled with our good dexterity, you're going to be sitting pretty there against area of effect attacks, most uh, trap attacks and the like, but your will saves, since we don't have a bonus to it, we're not sitting with a penalty either, you'll do reliably good there, but any means that you come across of boosting your will saving throw will be useful for you. Now, you also get a good attack bonus progression, starting off at plus zero at level one, then plus one, plus two, plus three, plus three, then after level five, you go up to plus four, 
plus five, plus six, plus six, on and on following that pattern. You'll be proficient with all simple weapons, which isn't a terrible range of weapons to have. And then you get the hand crossbow, the rapier, the sap, the short bow, short sword, sword cane, and light armor proficiency. You're not going to be proficient with any shields, however, not right off the get-go there. Now, just bear in mind, if you pick something like a dwarf or an elf, those will come with other proficiencies that get added in on top of this, which makes those other picks for your uh, character's ancestry, your character's race, however you want to slice that, those can make those uh, those extra options there can make those other picks a little bit more viable, a little bit more useful for you. Just bear in mind that you need to make sure that it's a weapon that will work with uh, your studied combat and your uh, those abilities that allow you to deal extra damage. So that is something to take a look at and make sure of. Now, when it comes to this class, you get your one of your unique abilities is being able to use extracts like the alchemist. You can make and use a number of extracts per day based on the, your investigator level and your intelligence modifier, drawing from the alchemist formula list. Learning or using an extract requires an intelligence score of 10 plus the extract level. So since we're at a 16, you're going to have access to all of those extracts that are, that are available to you right then and there. The save DCs are 10 plus the extract level plus the intelligence modifier. So if you have an opportunity to boost your intelligence score, that will boost the number of extracts you're able to use, and that will increase the save DCs for those extracts where it's applicable. Definitely something to keep in mind. Oh, and not to mention, that's also going to boost your skill ranks and several other class abilities down the line, as you'll see. Now, at level 1, we're still continuing on with alchemy here. You use craft alchemy to create an alchemical item and gain a competence bonus equal to your level on those checks. So, already going to be pretty useful there. Al craft alchemy, it, you could... I understand where some people would want to completely focus on boosting craft alchemy every single level. Certainly you can, but you can probably get away with doing every other level since you're getting a competence bonus equal to your level. And competence bonuses, while there are some others out there, this it's not the most common bonus type, so you can get a whole bevy of different kinds of bonuses that stack together and come together to synergize really nicely and boost your alchemy skill into the stratosphere. You can also use this to identify potions that you hold and examine for one round as if you were using the detect magic spell. Extracts must be made daily and only last for a day, meaning you're going to have to remake them. It's like uh, like a wizard refreshing their spell list every day, or any other caster for that matter. They only function for the investigator and become inert for anyone else when they leave the investigator's hand. Extracts can be affected by effects such as Dispel Magic, and you start with two extracts known, plus a number equal to their intelligence modifier. So if you're following this guide, you're getting that plus three intelligence bonus, so you're going to have five extracts known and available to you. You're not going to be necessarily be able to use that many per day, but it's nice to have that little bit of variety to let you hit the ground running. Next, at level one, you're going to get inspiration. Start with a pool of inspiration equal to one half your level plus your intelligence modifier, minimum of one. As a free action, use a point to add 1d6 to a skill or ability check, including any taking 10 or 20, which is a nice little addition there. This choice can be made after the roll, but before the results are revealed. Most of the time, you're probably going to be able to tell when you need that little bit of a boost there. Um, the DM probably won't tip their hand to you too hard, but it is certainly worth something to pay attention to and consider. And this, even though it's only a little bit of flexibility, this flexibility is pretty nice. You can use inspiration on any knowledge, linguistics, or spellcraft check without using a point of inspiration as long as you're trained in it. So linguistics, all of your knowledge skills, or at least the most important ones, it's going to be uh, very critical for you when you're making your character to invest uh, a skill rank into each of those to, uh, to really get this moving forward and to take advantage of the fact that you're not going to be burning any of the points out of your inspiration pool. You're really, really going to need those and you're going to need to conserve them. Now, Inspiration can be used on attack rolls and saves for two points, which hurts, 
but it can be done as an immediate action, which is also nice. But it is cool that you are able to boost your ability to make attacks and also have this option for boosting your saves. So it's going to only really be for those moments where you really need it, but it's cool and awesome that you have this as an option in your back pocket. Also, at level 1, you're going to pick up Trap Finding. Add one half your level to perception checks made to find traps and disable device checks. Investigators can also disarm magical traps. So, the only reason that I didn't highlight anything in that text is because all of that is great. All of that is great to have there. That's a huge bonus there. Now, perception, you're going to want to have that maxed out. So, getting half of your level on top of that to... Uh, to find traps and then also be able to dis use disable device to disarm them and to be able to target magical traps as well hugely beneficial massive absolutely critical for you to have particularly if there's nobody else in your party that's capable of finding traps at level two you're going to pick up poison lore no longer risk poisoning yourself when applying poison to a weapon. Spend one minute examining a poison and make a knowledge nature or arcana check to identify either natural or magical poison respectively. After that, you can then attempt a craft alchemy check to neutralize one dose of poison. Overall, kind of seems to make sense. I don't really mind this ability, but... The thing of it is, is that being able to cure poison like that, that's only, this is only going to be good in low magic campaigns where all kinds of magical healing or items to remove these effects aren't readily available. And to top it off, you're an alchemist. You can probably come, uh, come up with all kinds of magical concoction extracts necessary to cure a target because you can pour the concoction down somebody else's throat. If I remember right, I might have to double check that. So put a put an asterisk next to that one. And if anybody in the comments remembers right off the top of their head, let me know because I forgot to check that one. Point being, though, is that you have a whole lot of other means of dealing with the neutralizing poison than this, and it's only really going to be relevant in low magic campaigns. That said, not having to worry about poisoning yourself is going to be nice. Just be aware that there are going to be plenty of creatures that are either immune to or just flat out don't care about the poison damage that you could potentially be doing to them. Now, we uh, coming up on level 2, we have poison resistance, and this also increases at level 5, 8, and 11. You gain a plus 2 bonus on all saves versus poison. This is actually really nice because most... Uh, most poisons are going to be affecting your fortitude save, so getting a plus two bonus to, to your fortitude save is going to be handy. This increases to plus four at level five, plus six at level eight, which is a nice bit of scaling, but then you get outright immunity at 11th level, which is absolutely a nice bit of a cherry on top to have there. At level 3, we are going to get our first Investigator Talent. We also get another one at level 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, and level 19. You gain an Investigator Talent at the listed levels. Unless noted otherwise, a talent can only be selected once, and we'll go over talents in another episode further down the line. At level three, Also at level 3, you gain Keen Recollection. Attempt all knowledge checks at untrained, regardless. This is terrible. This is massively terrible, especially between your inspiration being able to boost this with no cost as long as you're trained with it. So you have every reason in the world to, at first level, already go ahead and invest your skill ranks into your knowledge skills so that way you're counted as trained in them. Like, there, there's no reason for this. This is a terrible ability. Like, it doesn't hurt you. It just... It, you either erase this completely and forget that it exists, or rewrite it. And what I would do is I would rewrite it as a roll again kind of thing and take the higher result, or roll twice and take the higher result. That would be a much better ability. And also, because it's with your knowledge skills, this is more in relation to character preparation and stuff. It gives them an edge, but it's an edge that's already potentially provided by using their knowledge skills, by leaning into their character build, their strengths, and storytelling, and unearthing information. So that is a perfectly acceptable place that's not going to be too unbalancing for, uh, for a character to have a roll twice and take the better result kind of ability, or roll again if, 
on a failure and take the results regardless of whether you succeed or fail. Either way, just get rid of it or rewrite it. One of those two options. Then, also at level 3, because this class gets front-loaded pretty hard, you gain Trap Sense. Gain a plus 1 bonus on reflex saves against traps and a plus 1 dodge bonus to AC versus attacks by traps. At 6th level and every 3 after, these bonuses increase by 1 for a max of plus 6 at level 18. So, it's not bad, it's, it's nice enough, but it's probably not the most important ability ever. Like, it's useful, especially since we're working with a lower armor class, but... I don't know, we've already got a good reflex save and a good dexterity score. The plus one to AC versus attacks by traps is nice, but really, maybe this is my own personal experience as a DM and a player with a couple of different other DMs, but this ability is more incidental rather than broadly useful. So it's it doesn't hurt. It certainly is it's nice that it scales, but again, it's probably not something that it's it's one of those things that is just nice to have overall. It's not going to be the most be-all, end-all kind of ability for you. But this is where we're going to stop for now. There are more abilities to talk about, more abilities to go over, but this video has already run almost up to the 16-ish minute mark. So we will be taking a break for now. We may not have the next video up for Saturday. There are many things going on still, as always, especially with Three Little Apprentices and some of us cut getting over having been sick and all, but uh, we'll tackle that for another time. So, what did you think? Did you like today's video? Did you dislike it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Hit those like or dislike buttons and we'll engage in discussion. And remember, if you've made it this far, you must have enjoyed something, so why not go down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. But with all that said, thank you all so very much for your time. I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. You all have yourselves a, a good night and good gaming to you all.